Um, so before I get into that stuff, though, kind of talk about a weight room philosophy that I have, how we get our players to perform in the weight room. So, you know, everybody has a philosophy, whether you are um, – quarterbacks coach or your running backs coach and offensive coordinator you all have a philosophy for your um, players right it's the same way in the weight room um, here are four things that I really preach in the weight room train hard and train smart is the first one right nobody ever got big in the weight room by lifting 135 pounds for the entire time by not pushing themselves right you got to train hard you got to push yourself you got to lift heavy weight you got to eat right you got to get enough sleep hydration is key Excuse me. I think that is like that's one of the main things that lacks. I, you know, you got to do all of those hard, right? You got to can't half-ass any of that stuff. Another thing that goes along with that, however, is training smart, right? So you got to know a player's boundaries, right? So other than having a spotter and form and technique and all that other stuff, you got to know a player's boundaries, right? So a perfect example of that is COVID, right? We're all in this huge COVID thing. The weight rooms, I'm sure, are just like ours, have been chaotic where we have to have limited numbers and all this stuff right well a huge thing we ran into was um you know we sent summer programs home with kids and you know at first their gyms were open well then their gyms weren't open so there was like three months where nobody lifted and then they came back and you know they just thought you know well i'm i got to show that i can still lift all this weight well no you can't and now you're going to risk you know an injury risk reward type of thing right so you got to kind of dial it back so you got to train hard train smart and then discipline, right? Discipline starts in the weight room. I'm a firm believer in that. Um, I have been since, man, little kid probably in the first time in the weight room. You know, discipline starts there, whether you're gonna have a player or you or whatever, you're gonna cut reps, right? When it gets hard on that last rep, are you gonna do the last rep or are you just gonna rack it because it's easier? Are you gonna skip an exercise? Are you gonna do whatever, right? So it starts there. Something that we do to really control discipline in our weight room and to keep kids moving and all that stuff it's i control everything with a whistle and if you guys don't do that with a whistle i'm not sure how you guys do yours but i would encourage you to do it with a whistle um, so how we do it and even on and off the field or on the field in the weight room whatever we're going to do if we're going to do a sprint how i start things everyone's about a yard behind the line i say ready everyone steps up to the line with some urgency when everyone stepped up then I blow the whistle, we do our sprints. Same way in the weight room, right? So I say, ready, everyone unracks their weight. When I see everybody's unracked their weight, I blow the whistle, they then do their reps, they rack their weight. I will then say second group. Usually it's about two to three in a group because with COVID right now, we can only get about two to three people in the weight room. I'll say ready um, for the second group, blow the whistle, all that, so on and so forth. And that really kind of changed in the last couple of weeks. I can see some kids starting to now go to class and now do this. And I, I think that that starts in the weight room discipline. So if you're not harping on your kids' discipline in the weight room, I would suggest doing it now. Um, a couple quotes that I'm always saying to the players, the main one, if you're juiceless, you're useless. I'm also a firm believer in that. If you as the coach and you as the player have no juice in that weight room, you're not gonna get anything done, right? So um, I, for me personally, I'm always clapping. I'm fist bumping. I'm chest bumping kids, you know, obviously I have to be watching and doing all that stuff, but I am trying to hype them up and the players pick up on that. And next, you know, they're cheering on their teammates and everything like that. There's nothing worse for a weight room than a dead one, right? So if you're juiceless, you're useless. And then the last one, just don't quit until you have nothing left, right? You don't want to give up on a, a weight when you had more in you, right? If you can max out at 10 more pounds, wouldn't that feel better to hit 510 instead of 500 for squat or whatever you're doing, right? So I just, and even on and off the field, right? Don't quit until you have nothing left. So those are the four things that I talk a lot about in the weight room. And I think all of those translate on and off the field in the classroom and all that good stuff. So if you're not doing any of that stuff, I would highly suggest starting. So having now talked about that, um, now we'll get into um, our triphasic training section.